Today is the 2nd of January, and I'm giving an update on the fight for my son Zulu, Josim Locho, Zulu Gapenuel. Um, the last time I made a video, I gave a, a summary of all the things that have transpired in the last seven years while I've been fighting for my son, and most importantly, the revelations that I got this year uh, regarding my son and his mother, Untab Um and a lot of updates specifically from, from her husband, uh, Uzulu's mother's husband, uh, Uzulu's stepfather. He is currently trying to get the mother on top saying to finalize their divorce. She's refusing to sign. Number two, she's been um, restricting access from the husband to get access to his daughter since February this year. Um, and there have been stories about uh, accusations of domestic violence, which apparently are untrue. Um, and a whole lot of other things, uh, specifically in their marriage. Um, but more especially um, for me regarding my son Uzulu and, and the living conditions that he was with, uh, that he was living in with his mom and the lies that his mom had been peddling regarding me. And it's been very painful and very sad. And the last time I made a video, the video was saying, was giving reasons why I feel it's best for me to walk away from my son. I felt that um, I had done the best that I, I could and it was either up to the mother to change and give me access to my son or it was for my son to grow up and then for me to get access to him through him directly and not by asking his mother. After I made that video, Something very cool happened, <laughs> which is why I'm making this video right now. The video circulated and it seems that it got to Ntab Singh and it got to Ntab Singh's mother through some of the people that know them. And for the first time, they acted. Mind you, Ntab Singh has not shown up to court, I think, four times now for Zulu. Uh, five times specifically, if I include a case that she opened for me, asking me to take down my last video claiming that I lied um, in the video um, and that it was a form of cyberbullying and that I had put her and the children in danger, which is all a pile of nonsense, of course. But, you know, when you're trying to paint a person in a bad light, you'll, you'll do and say whatever is, is needed. So she opened a case um, to try and get a restraining order against me, to try and get me to remove the video on, on my social media. Um... I haven't seen, I had not seen her since April last year. April last year was when we sat down with a family advocate and a social worker for mediation. And they finished a report in February this year. And I was following up in court to make sure that a magistrate either updates our parenting plan or gives me some kind of, of solution, resolution, um, for me to be able to see my son. Um, she's not shown up to court four or five times. I was in Newcastle a couple of days ago in KZN um, at, at Ntabi's home. Uh, I went there with the police. It was my second time. I went there maybe about three, three or four weeks ago now. I'd gone down with her husband. The intention was to make sure that we try and get her to sign a divorce settlement between herself and her husband. Number two, I needed her to sign a summons to appear in court in February next year in Randburg. Um... I had heard from sources in Newcastle saying that she she is now based in Newcastle. Um, so I, I felt it best to go there. I did not find her at home. I went to her paternal uh, her paternal father, paternal father, her paternal homestead, um, where I found her father and her paternal grandmother, and we got to tell them our side of the story. She was not there. They told us that she'd gone somewhere else for training but that the kids had been visiting, the two children, no Zulu, no Zoe. Um, we then went to the maternal side of the family, to Zulu's great-grandfather, um, who was also shocked apparently by our story and suggested that we have a meeting. The meeting never materialized. Umkulu ended up sending me an SMS stating that, look, he's no longer going to be involved, so I must deal with the maternal side of the family. When I spoke to Ntabi's father, he'd said he'd get back to me. I followed up with him twice, never got back to me, so... I realized I'm not going to get any help there. So I went back um, 
with the police uh, this past week. The last time I was there, <laughs> I, uh, by accident, when we went to the, the maternal grandfather's home, Zulu and Zoe were there. <laughs> we were not expecting it at all. Uh, I remember I froze and um, I started tearing up, you know. I, I didn't think I was going to get emotional seeing him again. But I got emotional. Uh, he just stood at the door with his mouth open. You know, uh, so tall, um, such a good looking young man, you know, and everyone who, who has met him has told me that he's, he's a very sweet, humble, respectful boy, which is very great for me. Um, and we got to chill with him for about 10, 15 minutes, left him a bit of money, kissed him, made a video. I just haven't uploaded, but I made a short video with him as well. I'll probably upload it at some point. Um, but I was happy to see him and I was happy that we'd started the conversations, at least with the families again. Unfortunately, that turned into nothing. Went there with the police. Last time I waited for the police for three hours to get a van because there's a shortage of vehicles, of police vehicles in the country. Eventually I had to put in fuel for another cop to take his own car to help. This time I tried to offer the same thing, uh, but luckily I, I, I only had to wait, I think about four hours. And in the waiting of the four hours, I left and then I went back to the police station. Waited four hours for a police van. It finally came and we went and we found her there with her mother. I was there with the support of my brother. So we get there and the police wanted to sign the summons and she refuses. She says, as far as her understanding of the law is concerned, this document is asking her to appear in Randburg and she's currently based in Newcastle. And my son is based in Newcastle. Therefore, I'm meant to kick off the process from a Newcastle court. So she's, she suggests I go to Newcastle and I start the process again. <laughs> the cop um, asks me how I feel about that. And I produce all the, the, the different summons documents. Because I've got two folders of all the evidence I have pertaining to my fight for Uzulu. And specifically dealing with Duntab saying including affidavits and a report that her husband has given me regarding a lot of these matters. I explained to the police officer that four times the mother has not shown up to court in Randburg, aware, aware because I'd sent her emails, I'd sent SMSs stating that she should be in court. She never showed up. Fifth case was her case, the restraining order case. She never showed up. She got an NGO that fights for women's rights to give her a lawyer for that day. On the day, she never showed up, but her lawyer did. When we faced the magistrate eventually, the lawyer explained that she'd been trying to get a hold of Untap Singh. She tried to send emails and Untap Singh had not responded. Magistrate gave us an hour um, to reconvene. An hour later, the, the lawyer didn't show up as well. It was just me. And the magistrate threw the, threw the case out. Later on in the day, the lawyer sent an email to Untap Singh and CC'd myself, stating that she'd been in court and that Untabi had not shown up and that she tried to call Untabi repeatedly and tried to send emails, and that Untabi had also not given her certain information that I'd given her pertaining the fact that I'm struggling with access and visitation with Uzul. You know, so I said to the police officer that this person does not respect the courts that she's speaking about so highly currently. Number two, and very importantly, I understand children's laws, children's rights, because I've been fighting for this thing for seven years, and I've gotten a chance to deal with so many different family advocates and magistrates who make sure that they teach you the rights of the child and I guess the rights of the parents as well. I told the police officer that as far as I'm concerned, Uzulu stays in Centurion, in Gauteng, because that was the last place that the mother had informed me that my son is based. She had never told me that she had moved with my son, which is a violation of a court order, the court order being our parenting plan. She'd never done that. She'd never notified me. I am now moving with your son to this place. She'd never done it. I found out from her husband that they'd moved to Randburg where Untab Singh was staying with her aunt and my son. When I told the Pretoria magistrate, they suggested I move the case to Randburg, which I did. We tried to serve. Um, we wouldn't get let in. Untab Singh was not responding. One of the times or two of the times she was served, she was served in court dealing with another case pertaining her husband where one of the clerks of the children's court went to serve her personally and she never showed up. 
Number two, when she moved from Randburg to Newcastle, she did not inform me. This I heard from people in Newcastle who had told me that they've seen my son. So they believe that the mother on Tab Singh has now moved to Newcastle. She'd never told me again. Second time moving with my son, she's never told me again violating uh, the parenting plan, which is a court order. So I said to the cop, it doesn't make sense for her to have the audacity to tell me to go and start this case in Newcastle when she's never informed me that my son is based in Newcastle. Worse yet, her restraining order case that she wanted for me to remove my YouTube video, that case on it, on it, she wrote her address as Randburg, which was at the end of October. So that's the only evidence and proof that I had of where she is based at all. We'd gone to um, the Randburg address. We'd found white people now staying at, at the home. They said they'd been staying there for two months, which means even when she filled in that document, she'd been lying about where she's based, which I don't know which laws are being violated, but to fill in a court document and purposely lie about your address, it just adds to the type of mindset of the person that I'm dealing with fighting for my son. Tab Singh's mother was very vocal that day, getting Muntabi to not agree to sign the, the sermons, uh, to, to sign the sermon so I could return to the court. Um, she defended Untabi a lot. She'd spoken about understanding the legal rights of the father. And somewhere in that conversation, I remember addressing the mother and Untabi saying, at the end of the day, Nina, you guys don't want me to raise my son. Because you can quote all the noise you want, including lying about me maintaining my son. I've got bank statements. Bank statements of monies sent to Zulu's account. But Ntabi lies and says I do not maintain my son. And luckily her husband has seen these to see that I've been maintaining. He's been maintaining my son for the past three or four years. Because what he was told by Ntabi, the mother, is that Penel is crazy and Penel has never maintained his son. Which are lies. Lies. On top of that, the biggest issue why Untabi restricted my, my visitation was because she had an issue that Uzulu slept over at my two children's mother's home. So his half-siblings were going to visit their mother and my, half, they, they, my children, my two children, Unkunzinu, Africa, wanted to go with their brother, Uzulu. And Uzulu wanted to go with them. And their mother had no issue. So the kids went to sleep over at that place. And Untab Singh lost her mind. I'm being reckless. Why is her child sleeping at whoever? Why did I not inform her? Why did I not ask her permission? The reports that we went, the family advocates we'd spoken to, all said the same thing. When a child is with a parent, that parent is expected to do what's in the best interest of the child. That means deciding where the child is going to sleep over, that it's safe, that it's fine, that the child won't be hurt. Untabi Singh herself, and it's come out especially harder now, has been sending my kids to visit her, her aunts, her uncles, her father, her grandfather. The husband has also told me that Untab Singh has sent the kids away to go visit his family. She's never informed me once. She's never asked my opinion once. And to be fully honest, I would have never given her an issue because the child is with her and I believe she's acting in the child's best interest. But she'd never given me the same courtesy. As if I'm some glorified babysitter that has to update her on what I'm doing with my son. A son who's also slept over at my brother's home his uncle's home, so he can spend time with his cousins that love him. Spend time with his grandmother, my mother, that love him. And I said this to the police, that the same woman here, the same woman has been sending my son to places, she's been moving around with my son, has never informed me, but she has the audacity to tell me this, that I never informed her of something that was so mild. One night in Joburg with his half-siblings, one night, and now she wants to tell me about legal rights and what what. They don't want me to raise my son. And it makes me worry because before I think I'd been very considerate of Untab saying, I thought, look, maybe she has separation anxiety from her child. Maybe she's still hurt because our relationship never worked out. Um, whatever the case may be. I never thought that there's a chance that she might actually be evil. There's a chance that she's a pathological liar. There's a chance that my son living with her is not in my son's best interests. And it hurt. Second thing I said to them in front of the police on that day was, Uzulu's Okula one day. Zulu's going to grow up one day. And Untabi better hope that Uzulu supports and defends her once he's older. Because if there's a chance that Uzulu has got my genes 
and thinks like me and acts like me, the family will see fires. I know what I would do if, I would, if I'd found out that my mother had purposely kept me away from my father who had been fighting for seven years to see me and that my grandmother had lied. And Tab Singh's mom wrote an affidavit stating that we never had a family meeting. 2014, we had a family meeting, myself, my mother, Tab Singh, Tab Singh's mother at my home in Newcastle to discuss the fact that Untabi won't let me see my son. There were witnesses on that day, but the mother had the audacity to write an affidavit for the court stating that I lied in my video and that there was never such a meeting. That's shocking. My son's mother, my son's grandmother, both pathological liars. And in all the stuff they're doing, it's not because I'm abusing my son. It's not because I'm abusing my son's mom. It's not because I'm not maintaining my son. Clearly their agenda is just, Penal must not raise his son. We have an issue with him and we refuse for him to raise his son. And we're going to use whatever methods and models and lies applicable out there in order for him to not see his son. And I told them on that day that you won't see it now, but my boy's being damaged. There's, there's, there's a damage to him and his development that's happening and you won't see it because you're so caught up, so caught up in doing whatever it is that you guys are doing. And now for Zulu, as a boy, he's now lost two fathers. He's lost me and he's lost his stepfather who has loved him. Loved him for years, provided for him, paid his school fees, fed him. When the mother was lying to him saying that Penal doesn't provide. To this day, we don't know what untabi has been doing with the money that I've been sending. The cool thing for me is I'm still going to fight through the courts. And I've got all the evidence. Bank statements, the, the summons where Untabi never showed up. The email from her lawyers stating that she never showed up for her own case. An affidavit from her husband stating what's been happening while they've been living together. Reports, a report from her husband including SMSs, emails. Some of these emails are emails that I'd sent to Untabi asking about my son's education. Asking about his development. Speaking about certain times when I'd had money issues and asking how can we make things work. I've got SMSs that I've been sending this year while I've been fighting saying to Untabi, if Uzulu needs anything, let me know. I will come and fetch him and we'll go and buy. Because I've had to learn the hard way that sending money to a mother is not, not good enough. If you're a good man, go shopping with your child. Buy things for your child. Because you don't know where this money is going that you're sending. Because clearly she's lying about what she's doing with the money. And we don't know what's happening with it. It's the saddest story ever. The cool thing that I've seen is the fact that posting things like on social media, it gets people around them talking. And it forces them to react, which is what they did. If I had not posted my video, she'd probably still be dodging and ducking and diving me. And I wouldn't know. And other people out there probably wouldn't really, really know my story as well. So that they can inform me. But we've seen your son. But we've seen Untab Singh. They're here in Newcastle. So I can be like, oh snap, let me actually try and serve her in Newcastle then. No one is paying me for the petrol, the driving up and down. Pretoria, Randburg, Newcastle. The stress and the, and the emotions it takes from me. And all I want, <laughs> all I want is to raise my boy. I'm not asking Tabi to give me back money. I'm not asking for, for, to, to, to be seen as right or for the world to love me. I just want to raise my son. One of the other things I said in front of the police is that I don't mind being wrong. I don't mind being caught out as a liar. Find out that, oh, Penal actually has not been maintaining his son. He's lying. Find out, no, Penal actually lied about something. Find out that maybe I'm not the greatest father that I, I portray myself to be. Find that all out. Let that all be true. And then get a judge to be like, okay, so Penal's a liar. Penal hasn't been maintaining. However, he has a right to his child and to raise his child. I just want to raise my child. I have not been lying, but even if I was, I just want to raise my child. I'm not trying to fight with anyone. I'm not swearing at anyone. I'm not demanding things from anyone. Can I just get a chance to raise my son that I had? It's very sad. And at some point I was blaming the courts because they dragged their feet, because things are not high priority. Even at the police station, they told me that since I'm just going to serve a summons, it's not high priority. And I remember telling someone that clearly I'd have to maybe start burning a house for the police to then come and then be like, oh, let's now come act. Because some of these other matters are minor. 
If they ask something like, is your son being abused? And I say, no, it's not an emergency. And it's sad because it's been seven years. Seven years fighting. Seven years fighting, trying to make sure that Uzulu gets a good education from me. Not from schools. Don't really care much for schools. I get to impart education. I get to show him the world. I get to expose him to his grandmother that loves him so much. Expose him to his uncle and his aunt who love him so much. Expose him to his half-siblings. Expose him to his cousins. Expose him to my side of the family with all their education and wisdom and experience and resources and networks. Those are his rights. He has a right to gain access to whatever I have and whatever I can give him. Even if I didn't have money, whatever I'm eating, he can eat. Wherever I'm going, he can come with and let him know that this is my father. This is what my father taught me. Whether it's right or wrong, but he'll know this is what my father taught me. I have a relationship with him. I am not broken. He was not absent. He loved me. And he gave me what he thought was his best. But I'm being denied that because there's a woman on the other side who feels she wants to play God and violate the courts and the law so that she can deprive me of my son and deprive my son of his father. So I'm making this video just to send that update. I'm going to keep fighting. I've got an affidavit from the, from the police stating that the mother refused to sign. Planning to take her to Randburg. I'm hoping that the magistrate will give me a warrant of arrest to get the mother arrested. I asked the police three times if the mother could get arrested because she's violating a court order. I'd like to think the police were a bit hesitant because they're scared of wrongful arrest and doing things wrong. So they were protecting themselves. But I want a warrant of arrest from the courts. And I want the courts to give a, a directive court order stating that I can fetch my son. Even if it's just for two weeks. To spend time with him. To hug him. To kiss him. To feed him. To go shopping with him. So he can spend time with his father that loves him. In this world that we live in, in this real world, it seems that good men come last and bad men always win. And it seems that good fathers somehow always get paired with bad mothers. And it seems that good mothers somehow get paired with bad fathers. The women that want the men to be present, the men are not there. The men that want to be present in their lives, in the children's lives, the women are blocking access. It's insane. It's, it's actually a joke. It's funny. It's a funny joke. But I'm hoping that my story and my journey and my fight will inspire other good men to fight, will inspire other men to reach out to me for advice. And I'm hoping more than anything, it'll, it'll get certain women to change their tune. Women and their families. There are children that don't have access to their fathers because the mother's side of the family refuses. Ubaba Galchaulanga hasn't paid damages. Ubaba hasn't done this. Or they just feel because the father's not married to the mom. He can't have access to his child. And the Lord doesn't, doesn't buy into that nonsense. And these families are short-sighted because they don't see the damage that this does to the child. A man with nothing, we've got 40% unemployment in South Africa, a man with nothing can at least give skills to his son, can at least impart wisdom and family history. If he's eating a plate of food, he can share that plate of food with his child. Let's eat together. He can take a walk with his child, show him, teach him how to play soccer, teach him how to ride a bicycle. That's the value that a, a present parent brings into their child's life. And when you deprive a child of that, you're killing something inside that child. And it's up to each and every one of us to begin doing things better, to begin being wiser, to begin putting our children first and stop letting petty squabbles and bullshit African traditions and whatever come into the way of you raising your child and you letting your child be raised by their other parent as well and both sides of the family. This is Penal. I'm just sharing my story. I'm really hoping that in future I'll be sharing a better story of how I'm now raising my son. I don't want to say that I've won. I said this as well in front of the police that even if I win, we will have lost. What is winning against my child's mother? What does that even mean that I'm winning? It means we've lost. We're both meant to be winning and our child is meant to win. Get, getting my son's mom arrested, which I refused to do in 2018. Now my hand is being forced. Clearly because I'm a nice guy, she took advantage of that. And it's hurt me and it's hurt my son. And she doesn't show the same courtesy. She doesn't offer the same consideration. Instead, she continues to lie. Jeez. Anyways, let's all do better. I hope to get my son Uzulu soon.
and I will update you guys on my progress. Have a great day and Happy New Year. Do better by your children. All of you. Cheers.